Hello everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel of Applied Forensic Research Sciences. Myself, Hisana Farhat, volunteer of Applied Forensic Research Sciences. Today in this video, I am going to explain about Wildlife Protection Act. Contents of this video are Introduction, Wildlife Protection Act, Need for this Act, Salient Features, Schedules under the Act, Constitutional Provision for Wildlife Act, Amendments, Protected Area under the Act and Penalties. So let's start. What do you mean by wildlife? Wildlife can be defined as the various fauna and flora of a particular region collectively. That means wildlife is a collection of different plants and animals in a particular area. William Temple Hornby was an American zoologist first used this term wildlife and it was mentioned in his book Our Vanishing Wildlife which was published in the year 1913. Wildlife doesn't only convey the idea of forest, it is found in all ecosystems such as desert, grassland, plains and so on. Now let's have a quick introduction on wildlife forensic. So everyone know wildlife forensic is a newly emerged branch of forensic that deals with the criminal investigations connected to wildlife. It mainly focuses on wildlife protection and conservation. Wildlife forensic use scientific procedures in examining, identifying and comparing evidences from scene of crime. And it also link these evidences with suspect or victim, either or both of them could be an animal or bird. So let's come to the topic Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So this act was enacted by the Indian Parliament in the year 1972. The act mainly focuses on safeguarding and protecting wildlife, that is wild animals, birds and plants in our country. It's done so to ensure ecological and environmental security. This law is applicable across India and except Jammu and Kashmir which has separate wildlife act which is named as Jammu and Kashmir Wildlife Protection Act 1978. So coming back to the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it prohibits hunting of wild animals listed in its schedule. So there are six schedules under this act, we can discuss about this later. Next, I am going to discuss the need for Wildlife Protection Act. The first need is to prevent drastic reduction in flora and fauna and which may result in ecological imbalance. That is, it can affect the food chain of living organisms. Then the act helps in prohibiting hunting of endangered species so that they never goes into extinction list. Some of the endangered species are Asiatic lion, Bengal tiger, black buck, etc. Then the act has been setting up national parks, sanctuaries, community reserves and such places where the wildlife can be protected. Also, act helps in controlling the trade of wildlife products such as elephant tusk, sandalwood, tiger skin and so on. Next, let's see the salient features of Wildlife Protection Act. As mentioned earlier, the act provides protection for some species of animals and plants which are listed. Then the act results in formation of wildlife advisory boards, wildlife warden and specify the duties of each. Then it gives protection for endangered species by prohibiting their hunting. One of the main feature of act is it provides license for sale, transfer and possess possession of wildlife species and also wildlife product. The creation of six schedules depending on the level of the need of protection to flora and fauna was really helpful. Establishment of National Tiger Conservation Authority was done under the Act. 
This act very much helped India in becoming a party to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Flora and Fauna CITES CITES is a multilateral treaty to protect endangered plants and animals. So now let's see the six schedules under the Wildlife Protection Act. Schedule 1 This schedule includes endangered species. These are species which need rigorous protection and therefore penalties will be so hard if someone violates law under this schedule. The species listed in this schedule is prohibited in hunting unless it causes any harm for human life. Examples for species coming under this schedule are tiger, black bug, etc. Schedule 2 It is almost similar to the schedule 1. The species in this schedule are highly protected and their trade and hunting is prohibited. It can also be hunted if it causes any threat to human life. Examples of species coming under this schedule are Indian fox, Kohinoor, which is basically an insect and so on. Schedule 3 and 4 These schedules are for species which are not listed in endangered species list but protected species. Also, the penalty for violation of law is comparatively less than earlier mentioned schedules. Hyena and flying fox are example for species under this list. Next is schedule 5. This schedule includes vermin that are animals or birds which can be hunted. These species are considered as carriers of disease. Example of these vermins are crow, mice, rat, etc. Schedule 6 that is the last schedule. This schedule is mainly for plants mostly that are forbidden from cultivation such as pitcher plant, red banda and so on. So next is the constitutional provision for wildlife act. Article 48a It directs that the individual state to protect the environment and also for safeguarding wildlife. It was added to the constitution in its 42nd amendment in the year 1976. Next is article 51a which imposes fundamental duties that is to be followed by Indian citizens. One of their duty is to protect and improve environment which includes forests, lakes, rivers and mainly wildlife. So now let's see the amendments made in the act. First amendment was made in 1986. Wildlife Amendment Act 1982 in the year 1986. Wildlife Amendment Act 1986 in the year 1986. Wildlife Amendment Act 1991 in the year 1991. Wildlife Amendment Act 1993 in the year 1993. Wildlife Amendment Act 2002 in the year 2002 Wildlife Amendment Act 2006 in the year 2008 Wildlife Amendment Act 2013 in the year 2013 Now let me explain about the protected areas mentioned under this act There are five types of protected areas They are sanctuaries, national parks Community Reserve, Conservation Reserve and Tiger Reserves. First, let's see about the sanctuaries. It is basically an area where animals or birds which are injured, abandoned or abused are protected and it gives them a natural habitat to live. Indian Wild Ash Sanctuary which is situated in Gujarat, Dandeli Wildlife Sanctuary in Karnataka are examples of sanctuaries. At present, there are 566 existing wildlife sanctuaries in India. Next is National Parks. These are areas to conserve the natural environment, environments. These are set up by the Indian government. In such places, human activities are prohibited and the aim of such places is for conserving the biodiversity. Bandipur National Park in Karnataka. Then Kaziranga in Assam are some of the examples. 
there are totally 104 national parks in India at present. Next is community reserves. These are private or community land that are declared as community reserve by the state government for conserving the wildlife. Arung in Arunachal Pradesh, Kokagre in Meghalaya are examples of community reserves. There are 214 community reserves in India. Coming to conservation reserves, these are also similar to community reserves. These are areas adjacent to sanctuaries or national park which is declared by state government as conservation reserves after consulting local communities. It also focuses on conserving wildlife. Mamdapur Conservation Reserve is one of the examples of conser conservation reserves. Currently, there are 97 conservation reserves in India. Next is Tiger Reserve. So, this area is reserved for protecting and conserving tigers in India. As they are limited in number and are endangered, they are given more protection. These are declared by Tiger Conservation Authority. So, Sundarbans in West Bengal, Korbat in Uttarakhand are some of the examples. There are 51 existing tiger reserves in India. Now, let's discuss about penalties. So, penalties for violation of law under this act depend on various factors such as schedule under which the animals, birds or plant belong, then to which the offence relate, area to which the offence relate, the nature of offence also depend on offender whether he is repeated accused. Section 51 in Wildlife Act represent punishment and penalties for violation of law under this act. Imprisonment can vary from 6 months up to 7 years depending on the offence. The fine is also imposed on the accused which ranges from rupees 500 to rupees 10,000 and even more depending on the nature of offence. So now we have reached the end of the video and it's MCQ time. The question is what is the full form of CITES or CITES? Option A. Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species Option B. Convention for International Trade in Endangered Species Option C. Convention for Indian Trade in Extinct Species Option D. Convention for International Trade in Extinct Species Do comment the answers in the comment section. The right answer will be discussed in the next video. And now let's see the right answer of the MCQ question of the previous video on the topic Crime Scene Investigation Tools. The question was Dry blood at the crime scene can be collected by using which tool? Option A. Sterile gauze. Option B. Scalpels. Option C. Cotton swabs. And Option D. Scissors. The right answer is A. Sterile goes. Thank you for sparing your valuable time to watch our video. Do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.